Are the SATs racist? Not only are the SATs a pretty bad predictor of academic success, they do something else entirely. Sort people by race. And that's not by accident. It's a problem that goes back almost a hundred years and is baked into the very way these tests were designed. The first SAT was invented in the mid-1920s by a man named Carl Brigham, a eugenicist who became enamored with the fairly recent invention of IQ testing. After examining the IQ tests given to the military during World War I, Brigham wrote a book called A Study of American Intelligence. Brigham concluded from his study that African-American children couldn't handle an American education as well as Anglo-Saxon children. He also worried that if white Americans mixed with African Americans and Jews, the future blended American will be less intelligent. A few years later, he invented the SAT. Brigham is being approached by Princeton and Yale University and other members of the Ivy League because in the 1920s, they're going apeshit that too many Jewish boys in New York City are getting into Columbia. The SAT from its inception was designed as an IQ test, which they truly believed would, would enable them to identify what Carl Brigham called the Nordic stock and protect it from the non-Nordic stock. Now, by 1930, Brigham realized that his earlier conclusions about race were without foundation and had to retract them. Oops. But his test was already gaining popularity. Colleges eventually realized that the SAT was pretty bad at determining academic success, but it was pretty good at determining something else entirely, whether or not a student's parents had money. They get to disguise selection for bank accounts and dress it up and disguise it as selection for brains, as long as they've got a test that correlates in a robust way with family income, even though they know it's doing a crap job in predicting college academic performance. To this day, high scores on the SAT correlate positively to student-reported household income. Part of this is who can afford to prepare for the test and the kinds of families and households that are invested in good SAT performance. The way it disadvantages the kids is all, I mean, it all has to do with money, right? Parents start paying for tutors as early as in ninth grade uh, up in you know, more affluent areas. It's definitely better meant for people with more money than the kids who are in inner cities. Now, College Board, the group that administers the test today, told us that they're doing what they can to bolster opportunities, like offering free SAT prep courses or working with scholarship funds for black and Hispanic students. But that still doesn't get to a really important point, which is that there are slightly different racial outcomes on the SAT. Okay, so why? Well, many look at unequal outcomes on tests and see an inherent racial difference. This is part of a long debunked history of a field called race science, which is often used to justify inequality by chalking it up to innate differences, usually in intelligence. Now, IQ is affected by genetics, partially, but there's also a huge environmental component. IQ often goes up in areas that see big gains in things like health, nutrition, and parental literacy. For example, from 1984 to 1998, the IQ of children in Kenya rose 26.3 points. In about the last 30 years, IQ in China rose around six and a half points. And studies show that kids adopted from poor homes and raised in wealthy homes can see an IQ gain of 12 to 18 points. So when you look at an SAT or IQ test and notice what looks like an inherent difference, what you're actually seeing is a whole system of environmental factors. The SAT is losing popularity, and now there's a growing test-optional movement of schools dropping the test entirely. But admissions offices still widely regard it as a method of determining who's best suited to attend college. And a recent analysis from the New York Times shows that black and Hispanic students are less represented at top colleges than even in the early 1980s. But when we're building a system where the criteria for admission is based on our born privileges, why would we expect any other result?